1934, Lord Raglan did a study of heroes in ancient history. He read through ancient stories, and he wanted to find if there were similar characteristics or incidents that classic heroes went through. And at the end of his analysis, he discovered that there were 22 common characteristics of a hero in ancient literature. A few of them were, he becomes a king. He marries a princess, often the daughter of his predecessor. On reaching manhood, he returns or goes to his future kingdom. His children, if any, do not succeed him. And at times, that hero can meet a uneventful death. Those are some of the 22 characteristics of heroes that were described in ancient stories. It could be ancient Greece, ancient Rome, ancient England, ancient Hebrew scripture stories, these heroes that Lord Raglan described. But the heroes that we see in our, in our everyday life, we could say that they are simply ordinary. Welcome to the Stephen Thompson Experience. My name is Stephen Thompson, and this is my experience. I use history and music to make connections with the goal of informing, educating, and inspiring others to go out and live, serve, and love others around them. And hopefully, together, we can do our part in making our world a little bit better. My Hero is a song by the Foo Fighters. It was released in January of 1998. It was the third single on their second album, The Color and the Shape. And the song reached number six on the U.S. Billboard charts. Lead singer Dave Grohl, he said that the song was dedicated to ordinary, everyday heroes. And Grohl said that he himself didn't really have musical or sports heroes growing up. And he said this during an appearance on VH1's Storytellers. So when I listen to the song, there are some lyrics that stand out to me. There goes my hero. Watch him as he goes. There goes my hero. He's ordinary. And that stood out to me. Ordinary. Heroes are ordinary, everyday people, just like you and I. And since this is Women's History Month, uh, ordinary hero that I want to introduce you to is Lucy Diggs Lowell. And she was a woman, and one of her unique characteristics is they called her a woman of first. For example, she was one of the original 16 founders of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. It was one of the first sororities founded by women. And she did that in, at Howard University in 1908. Another first, in 1922, she was appointed the first woman dean at Howard University. And she led and created two professional organizations to support college administrators. Another unique thing about SLO was she was a tennis champion. She won the national title of the American Tennis Administra Association's tournament in 1917. That made her the first African-American woman to win a major sports title. 1919, she created the first junior high school in Washington, D.C. for African-American students and became its first principal. Then in 1922, Howard University asked her to become the Dean of Women, and she was the first African-American female to hold that position. So this was a woman who was ordinary, but did extraordinary things. It reminded me a quote that Martin Luther King said, in 1958 in Pittsburgh, and he was speaking at a meeting of the Commission on Ecumenical Missions and Relations. And he said this, 
I am afraid that many among you are more concerned about making a living than making a life. You are prone to judge the success of your profession by the index of your salary and the size of the wheelbase of your automobile rather than the quality of your service to humanity. The misuse of capitalism can also lead to tragic exploitation. Go back to the lyrics of the song and tie this together. Don't the best of them bleed it out while the rest of them peter out? Truth or consequences, say it aloud. Use that evidence, race it around. That's from There Goes My Hero. And when we decide to concern ourselves with humanity and the service of it, we are in danger sometimes of what he says in the song bleeding out or petering out and herbert frudenberger said in 1974 he wrote a paper called staff burnout one of the first works on burnout in the workplace and he talked about burnout being to fail to wear out to become exhausted for making excessive demands on your energy strength or resources and then he talked about burnout that occurs amongst people who work in serving positions. He talks about staff members in hospitals or at the time institutions that delivered mental health resources to people. He would say that there were physical signs, exhaustion or fatigue, unable to shake a cold, suffering from headaches, gastrointestinal disturbances, sleeplessness, shortness of breath. He talked about the burnout begins to work its way into your body functions. And he says that burnout occurs amongst the dedicated and the committed. I want to read a quote from Frudenberger in his paper. He says, burnout comes from the dedicated and the committed. Now that may sound foolish, but just think for a minute. Those of us who work in Free clinics, therapeutic communities, hotlines, crisis intervention centers, women's clinics, gay centers, runaway houses are people who are seeking to respond to the recognized needs of people. We would rather put up than shut up. And what we put up is our talents, our skills. We put in long hours with bare minimum of financial compensation. But it is precisely because we are dedicated that we walk into a burnout trap. We walk work too much, too long, and too intensely. We feel a pressure from within to work and help, and we feel a pressure from the outside to give. It goes right into our lyrics. There goes my hero. Watch him as he goes. There goes my hero. He's ordinary. So in our work to serve others, we have to watch ourselves to make sure that we don't succumb to burnout. Because as MLK said in his sermon, there are many people who focus on increasing the amount of financial compensation that they make or working so that they can have possessions to show to people. But then there are the ordinary individuals who work to serve others each day. And there is a danger and a threat to burning yourself out. So I'm going to leave you with three questions. Number one, what is a hero to you? Number two, who are the ordinary heroes that cross your path each day that you need to think? Number three, how do we or how can we show up as heroes to others in our daily service to humanity? And number four, in giving to others, how do we manage or protect ourselves from burnout. Thank you for listening to the Stephen Thompson Experience. My name is Stephen Thompson, and this has been my experience. It is my goal to desire to inform, educating, and encouraging, and inspiring myself and others to create a path towards the goals you set and the hopes you want to pass on. Thank you for listening, and see you again soon. I hope and pray that you will be the best version of yourself and that you will find a path through, around, or over obstacles that come your way. I enjoy history and great music, so go listen to my Hero by the Foo Fighters. Check out my website, The Stephen Thompson Experience. I have a newsletter, a blog, links to my YouTube channel, my novels, and some worksheets to guide you through exercises to help you manage difficult situations in a positive way. Until next week, take care. Goodbye.